Hi, this is Alex of Pacific Northwest Bible Journaling, and I'm here to show you some watercolor florals I created to use with the Creative Retreat Faith Art Box for the month of March. It's called Just As He Said, and it was written by Haley Mullins. Um, I really dove into um, a couple of the reflection questions here, specifically looking at kind of ups and downs, um, doubts, and things that you can be certain of. And I came to this sort of idea that without the sun set, there can't be a sunrise. And without the sun dying, he couldn't rise. And so I knew I just wanted um, to do some sort of creating that would let me meditate on this. This kit is just amazing. It has these stamps. You see it came with the leaf stencil below, and then it the add-on was this floral stencil. Um, they are absolutely beautiful. And I knew I wanted to try something different. I Last time I worked with the kit, I used ink um, within the stencils. And this time I wanted to use them in accompanying some watercolor. So what I did was I just wanted uh, some kind of creative medium that would let me pray and think while I created. And watercolor does that. And so here I am. I just grabbed the um, Illustrated Faith watercolors. It, I knew that it had some similar colors, but truly with blending and other techniques, you can get the color you want with just about any um, watercolors you may have on hand. Um, I also am using the stencil there sort of as a guide for how big to make the blossom. Um, the second step in this process after they dry is going to be taking a um, precision pen and adding detail using the stencil over the top of the watercolor. So. Um, what all I'm doing with the watercolors here is I'm blending and I'm trying to get the colors that reflect and the shadowing and the shapes as close as I can to the blossoms you see there on the Art Elements sticker page. Um, the best way that I have found to do this, I am no watercolor expert. In fact, I don't do it very much um, because it's sort of new to me um, and I'm, I'm trying to challenge myself. So the best way I have found to do... Um, to get the color or to get the depth and texture and a variety of colors is to let the page dry um, between applications. So you can see even there some of the yellow has already dried or the red has dried slightly before pink before I go back and add a second color on top. Or when you use a little less water the paint is more concentrated so the color itself is more vibrant. Um, the thing to remember with watercolors itself is wherever you have laid water the paint will spread especially if it's not fully dry, but even after it dries a great deal, um, the paint will spread out in those particular, kind of almost like you've created a pathway or a lane. And so here when I'm adding a little bit of brighter teal green to the blue, you see it bleeds out. I have no problem with that. I think that is the beauty there. I did it on purpose. I dropped, literally dropped some paint onto some brighter yellow and orange colors onto the yellow blossom in hopes of kind of creating pooling and, and so that it would naturally flow onto the edges of where those petals um, had previously laid. And so basically the water, the, the freedom you have with watercolor for the most part is that it's it moves, it has movement. And so I let the paint move as it will. Um, here, I don't have exactly the right greens I wanted. I don't have exactly the right blues. Um, these are more muted than the blue or the green color that I was going for. So here I'm adding in a bright, much brighter. I'm kind of having to compensate for that. And the more I blend and the more I play, um, I actually get closer and closer to the color that I want. And again, I'm using the stencil there to the left as kind of a guideline for shape because I'm going to want to use the stencil and a precision pen after it dries to add in black um, pencil lines as the detailing. So I'm wanting the shapes to kind of uh, mirror that of the stencil. Um, but here I am, I brought that brighter green in again. I found that when I blended two or three different greens, I could get the color. You'll notice I did not change my brush the entire time, even for a thinner line like the stem. Um, if you change brushes, you're going to be able to maybe be more intentional about where you drop paint or where you um, lay it or the th it could be a thinner line, like the stem could have been thinner. Again, I knew I was going to add pen marks that would add that kind of thin detail and so I didn't need necessarily to use a bunch of different brushes. Um, I also like things to make a bold statement 
Um, and I like things that keep it simple. And so for me, using the same brush that came with these paints just kept it really simple. Um, but if I had wanted to, I could have grabbed uh, some thinner brushes to add in, sort of like what I'm doing now where I'm adding the center of the flower. You see that over to the side there, that sticker, the one yellow blossom has kind of a black center, almost like an anemone would. Um, and so I, I did drop some of the dark green kind of blackish color into the blossom. I love in the end, both that blossom there on the bottom that's yellow with the darker center and on the right side of the screen where it's the, the yellow blossom where I added pink. Um, those actually ended up being my favorites in the end, um, but I really didn't know if I would like it, so I gave myself a variety. I also created way more than I needed because I didn't know what um, size pen I was gonna use. I didn't know if the stenciling was gonna work, and so if I messed it up, I wanted to still be able to kind of complete an entry with being able to try kind of a variety of things. So I, I did this just on regular computer paper. I created a bunch of leaves and blossoms more than a single entry would require so that I could play around. Um, the other thing I thought of was these are all sort of the same size and shape. Even the leaf pattern, it kind of has the same like uh, I don't know, texturing to it or size to it. It's kind of consistent. And so when I looked over at the sticker page and saw that more like branch type shape, I thought, you know, if I, if I create something that mimics that too, it'll give me something, some variety when I lay these on top of each other. Again, I truly had no idea if any of this was going to turn out the way my, my mind's eye had it. Um, and it does in the end, I'm very grateful for that. But I found that even just the painting was its own form of worship. Um, it, there is no right way or wrong way to do this. And so I always try to remind myself that when I'm when I'm working and when I'm creating, that the actual act of creating is worship. And the things I'm thinking about and praying about while I create, it is the worship, it is the praying. And so um, I, it frees me up a little that it doesn't have to turn out or it doesn't have to create this perfect Bible journaling entry. So then I don't have to worry as much, um, which I think when you're trying a new technique is really especially important. Um, and then I actually created this singular leaf. I wish I would have created a couple more of those because I had plenty of space on the page and I love how it turned out. Um, I love that it was bright blue. I, I think it makes it a little bit um, less, the, the, your commitment to being realistic is a little less when say you make a blue leaf. Um, and so I, I liked that. I, I also liked that it was really vibrant in comparison to some of the lighter um, elements that I was creating. So I then literally walked away from these pages. Um, I let them dry completely while my family ate dinner and did other things for the day um, because I knew that if I was going to use a precision pen on top of watercolor, um, it was going to have to be completely dry. You could also use um, like a dryer, but I will say with watercolors, if you use a blow dryer, it will blow the paint into new places. There's no reason to shy away from that, but um, it's just something to be warned about. So here they were totally dry. Um, I grabbed my stencil. The first, I went with the plain yellow flower first because I was using a size brush. I wasn't sure if I, or size pen that I, this is a larger, it's like a 0.5 or something. Um, I wasn't sure if I would like it. And so I chose the blossom that wasn't my complete favorite. Um, this is actually a 0.65. And when I pull up the stencil here, I like it, but it's not what I was going for. The, the lines are too thick. I wanted them to feel sketchier. And for like where I went over inside the stencil um, tw two or three times, I didn't want it to be a thicker line. I wanted you to see two or three separate little squiggle lines. So you'll see that with this one. I kind of go back and forth, like I'll jump back in the stencil, back into the line. And wh what the effect is when it's a thinner pen, which is, I think it's a point two, um, or it could be even a 0.02 actually, now that I say that. Um, it is an illustrated faith pen and it's 0.25, this one is. So it's half the width of the other one or less than half. And then when I pulled up the stencil, I liked it. It looked sketchier. So that's what I was going for, almost like stitching or um, like someone who just just sketches with black, um, black ink. You'll see um, Allie Brownie, I, I believe Brown is her last name. Um, she's done some work with Illustrated Faith. She has kind of that sketchy look. There's lots of artists out there that do it and that's what I was going for. And so um, I did like the thinner pen mark. Um, I truly just laid down my stencil. If it lined up, great. If it didn't, I, 
I could have moved part of the stencil off the blossom. I could use not use the bottom two lines. Like on this one, I didn't have to do the line I'm doing there. I could have skipped it entirely and kept all my lines inside the color. I like, if you look over at the top left blossom, how the bottom two lines of petals don't all land on yellow. Um, I just kind of like how that looks. I can't even explain to you exactly why, except for that it feels a little bit more abstract. Um, and the realism is taken down a notch, which I wanted. I think that's kind of the beauty of watercolors. So I hope that you get the overall effect of what I was going for here and that you can see that like where I laid those initial strokes of paint to give the overall shape, it's very faint and it doesn't matter that they aren't detailed because the detail is coming from the black pen here. Um, same thing with like, it doesn't matter that there are no black lines, say on that middle yellow blossom where you can see the pink and orange peeking out they create their own lines right there and I don't need a bunch of extra lines. If I did, I could lay my stencil over and add a couple of extra squiggles if you feel like, oh, that whole section of the flower needs more detail. Um, I left one off on that one. I didn't mean to, it's just what I did and I like how it turned out. So like that blue one and the yellow one, there I went back and added that missing line, um, but I didn't ever do that on that yellow and orange blossom and, and that just makes them all different. With a stencil, you will create more of a, consistent look but you don't have to you can fill in lines or leave out lines um, it, there is freedom when using the stencil and so I tried to kind of remind myself of that too that like oh if I don't do this top line or I leave out these middle squiggles um, it just makes uh, the flower look different than the one to the right or to the left there it was I picked up the stencil I moved it where I wanted it and it gave me still the guide to squiggle my lines in between, but it was more intentional than just tracing this the stencil one time in its place. Hope that makes sense. Also, if you're a little bit nervous about this, um, you can always use some washi tape to tape down the stencil. One suggestion I have is take the washi tape and actually push it on your skin first to remove some of the stickiness because if you lay the, the tape onto some other part of your page that's painted or onto your Bible, it can pull words up or it can pull color up, um, even though it's not full scotch tape. Even washi tape will do that. But it's sticky enough to hold a stencil in place, um, but not pull something off your page. With the leaves, um, this was a little trickier because I hadn't done my, my, my leaf my initial painting of the leaf exactly in the shape and I didn't model it after the stencil as much as even I thought I was. So when I got to doing the sketching, I realized, oh, I have to, in order to get the, uh, the leaf going that direction or the stem to reach where I want it to, I just have to flip it over or mirror it or tilt it. I couldn't just trace it one and done um, with the leaves. And that's okay. I, I kind of had realized that as I was doing the flowers was kind of okay with that fact. The reason I use the stencil and don't just um, draw these shapes is because I like that it served as a guide for my pen to fill the space, to squiggle, to, to do more than one line within that gap of space in the stencil. Um, here you could have added way more detail to the center of that left hand leaf where those stems come up. I like how they look. I think it draws your eye to different parts of it. I also knew that once you layered these with blossoms on top of the leaves, um, you wouldn't necessarily see all parts of the leaf, so it didn't really matter. Here, I did not have a stencil, obviously, to, to do add the black line, so I just had to sketch them. I also had to kind of clean off the tip of my pen periodically, because as it runs across the paint, it picks up the paint and it makes your pen um, not work as well. So you kind of got to wipe it off or clean it off. And then I fussy cut it, and I fast forward this because, you know, this is just... Uh, Lots of fussy cutting, but I did leave a little bit of white around each one. I didn't, I wasn't like fully committed to being exact in my cutting. I knew it was going to be laid down on a white page in my Bible. So it didn't matter if the white, there was white around it. I also knew that some piece, parts of these elements were going to be layered and covered up. So it doesn't have to be as precise then either. Um, I end up with basically enough to do a full layout in the illustrating Bible. It even covers up the words slightly with, and then with like two, two blossoms and an additional leaf for an addition for another entry. So the nice thing about mass producing them was if I didn't like something, I felt free to um, not use it like that first blossom made with the thicker pen. And then it also freed me up to uh, have more than one entry with this, 
a larger amount. It was more like 30 to 45 minutes of watercoloring. Um, it gave me some materials to use in future entries or in more than one entry. Um, the other thing I want to point out is see that blossom there, the second one down from the top, it had green leaves on it. I loved that. I wish I would have done more of that with each blossom um, because I looked over at the sticker pad and the one of the yellow flowers had leaves coming off of it. And I love how it looks and it didn't have any black lines on it. You could add black lines um, because then it adds like a little bit of greenery, almost like in a flower um, arrangement where the greenery offsets the blossoms. And I wish I'd had more uh, greenery directly coming off the blossoms. Didn't know I, I would want that, so I literally didn't know to do it. Um, but that I would go back and do that differently next time. Um, so you'll just basically see me here take all of these blossoms that I cut out. I didn't cut out that last one there that's on the page because it, I didn't like the thick lines. It wasn't cohesive with what I had, the aesthetic I had going on. And then I just laid them out so that I could, and I took a picture of that layout so I would remember what I liked or what I had done. So when I transferred it to the pages of my Bible, I would kind of remember. That's way more than one entry, but it showed me I like, I like to make sure that the yellow and the pinks were mixed up or that I liked that there were two together. Um, so this is that picture I took to show myself what the layout I had done, and then I put them in my Bible. And if you want to see more of the process of how I laid them out, you can jump over to the Creative Retreat YouTube channel to see my entry called Bitter and Sweet. I'll link that below along with all of my supplies. Thanks for tuning in. This is Alex of Pacific Northwest Bible Journaling. I hope you are inspired to watercolor and worship, to try something new, and to get into God's Word. Happy Bible journaling!